Yeah, definitely. So, so you mentioned, you know, working with, uh, with UCF. I mean, in my experience, I, I feel like maybe at some of these top level schools, you'll have like teams that are working with uh, nutritionists or dietitians that are, that are working for the school. But at some of these lower level schools, you really don't see it. And I'm, I'm curious to get your opinion on it when it comes to college athletes as a whole. And, you know, from my experience, I've seen that I feel like diet and nutrition is very much overlooked, right? They're putting in all this work and effort on their court or in the field or in the gym for their, for their respective sport. But I feel like sometimes like they don't put in the necessary work when it comes to off the field. Right. So kind of talk about your experience in kind of working with UCF and, and working with some of these, you know, these college athletes that maybe didn't have the experience of, of having a nutritionist or a dietitian uh, on their team and sort of what were some of the benefits that came about? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I talked about young people feeling like they're invincible. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, just feeling like, oh, I can eat whatever I want. I can go on party. I can, you know, and, and especially for a student athlete, I feel like student athletes, I think it's one of the most difficult times in your life, even before becoming professional athlete, because when you're a professional athlete, this is your full-time job. Like my WWE athletes, the NBA athletes, like this is their full-time job. And part of your full-time job is to eat right. Because again, that goes into your performance. It goes into your recovery. When you're a student athlete, you've got two full-time jobs. You are a full-time student and you are a full-time athlete. Your coach thinks that's your full-time job <laughs> and your professors think that's your full-time job. And you have to balance between the two. And then you're up late studying. And, you know, I don't have to tell you guys, um, you know, that the balance of a student athlete. So, you know, as someone who's worked with juniors versus collegiate versus professional, I have to say that that collegiate level, um, I think just from a life balance perspective and from a nutrition perspective is one of the most difficult because your time is like completely yeah. pulled and part of nutrition is time. You know, I always say that there's two P words that come with nutrition and it's preparation and planning. And no one likes these P words. No one likes to plan ahead. What am I going to eat? Or especially a college student or to prepare something. What? I have to like think ahead and then actually like put it in a baggie and like bring it with me and throw it into my gym bag. And what? I have to like bring stuff with me. Um, so especially those college programs, like you were saying, that don't have the nutrition, you know, staff there, they don't have the locker room stocked with goodies of food and, um, and, you know, bars and smoothie stations and, you know, all the stuff that maybe some of these bigger colleges do have, it is going to be up to you. And you do have to take the onus and you do have to say, you know what, this is part of my job. If I were to write a job description for myself as an athlete, part of my job description is to eat. <laughs> and I know that's part of life too, but like well, part of your though, job right? description as an athlete is to think about like, okay, I can't just like roll out of bed and head to practice. Like I need to get up 30 minutes earlier and eat a bagel, mm -hmm. eat some cereal, eat, you know, make a smoothie, like whatever, so that I'm getting to practice prepared. And then, you know, thinking about, okay, I got to run to class right when practice ends. I barely have time to shower and boom, I'm running across campus. What are you going to pack? What are you going to bring? Because you cannot go to class for two hours from a practice with nothing to eat. You can, you're not going to die, but that's not going to be the best recovery for you when you have practice again later today or again tomorrow. So I would say, you know, Steve, the, the answer to your, my long answer to your question is preparation and planning is one of the biggest things you have to do. If you don't have someone helping you professionally helping you, or, you know, your team doesn't have all of those snacks and meals and stuff provided for you, then you got to take it on yourself and realize that this is part of my job. No, no totally. I, absolutely. I was, I mean, I was just going to say like, I, I'm, I'm definitely speaking from experience over here because <laughs> I definitely didn't have the best, uh, off court preparation and planning. Um, it's one black, one black coffee a day. That's, yeah, that's about so it. <laughs> I, I was, I was one of those, I was one of those people where like, I literally couldn't eat before a match. Or, or a practice, I just, cause I would feel so lethargic. So like they would always make fun of me because like we would go on like team breakfasts before a match. But the problem is, is like if we're traveling like five hours away or whatever, 
uh, we're, we're basically going and grabbing breakfast like 20 minutes before the warm up, And I'm like, you guys can do that. I can't do that. So meanwhile, Alex is putting down like, like the breakfast of champions, like without a problem, <laughs> even though he's got a match in 20 minutes, but that's besides the point. So I, I mean, I, I literally ran on like black coffee before my matches. And then just like, I would eat whatever, like after, like, it was so like, like off the, off the hip and not really like planned. And I definitely think that that is a place where if I sort of, you know, paid more attention to, I could have definitely benefited me more. For sure. well, I'm so yeah. glad that you said that. And let me just jump in here because I think that's one of the biggest, I know this is something you were going to ask me later, but I'm going to answer it now. What is one of the, one of the things that you can do to become a pro? to become you know, more successful. And that is practicing what you're gonna do on competition day in practice. So mm -hmm. what you should have done looking back is say, okay, instead of telling yourself this story, I can't eat anything before matches, otherwise I'm gonna get sick. Like maybe that's true, but it is a story that you told yourself that you started to believe over time, right? Yeah. What you do is you go back and you go, okay, you know what? I'm going to practice this and practice days and I'm going to eat a half a granola bar. I'm going to eat a half a banana, like start with something really small, 20 minutes before my practice and see how that sits. And I'm going to do that day after day after day until my body says, oh, okay. Yeah. You're going to give me that. You're going to give me the little piece of granola bar. You're going to give me that little piece of banana. I'm used to that now. So you can train your body to change the story. <laughs> you really can. I've seen it with lots of athletes. I've done it with lots of athletes that you change that story of I can't eat before a competition. I can't eat before a practice. That's one of the things that, you know, I saw when I entered the tennis world versus other worlds. I saw all these athletes doing something completely differently in matches than they were in practice. Oh, well in practice, I drink this and I eat this, but in matches, I drink this and I do this. And I'm like, why is this so different? We need to practice what we're doing in practice for competition, right? So, you know, the same drink, the same bar, the same chews, the same, like whatever it is, banana, like if that's what you're going to do in changeovers in a match, then that's what you should do in practice so that your body becomes accustomed to doing this. So, yeah, I'm going to, I see, this is what I do as I dispel all of your excuses. Absolutely. That's right. That's, see, what, that's this, what we were hoping this for, is, honestly. You know, you know, of course, Alex introduces you to me like after, you know, we're all retired. This is, and, uh, this is my plan all along, yeah. right? It's just to <laughs> yeah. be like, I told you so. That's because he didn't want to get you to, he didn't want you to get yeah, too that's, good. That's it. It's all, it's all in here. It's I all think, in I here. Th I think you're onto something. <laughs>